If you are looking to boost your erections, don't just think supplements, think oxygen. It's summertime and if you have to decide where to spend your vacation, mountains or seaside, I think it becomes pretty obvious what's best for your erections. In this video, I will give you some tips how to improve your oxygen supply in order to have better erections and I will solve the puzzle why high altitude is bad for your erections. My name is Stefan Buntrock, I'm a board certified urologist and sexologist. When it comes to erectile physiology, there is a gas that your body produces. Without that gas, erections won't be possible. I am talking about nitric oxide. When nitric oxide is released from nerve endings within the erectile tissue of the penis, the smooth muscle of the cavernous bodies starts to relax, enabling them to be filled with blood. Many men want to boost their erections by supplementing L-arginine, which is an amino acid. L-arginine is a substrate for nitric oxide. So if you increase L-arginine, potentially more nitric oxide will be produced and consequently erections will be easier and more powerful. I am talking on a very basic level here. In reality, it's much more complicated. The conversion of L-arginine to nitric oxide is done by an enzyme by the name of nitric oxide synthase. However, this is only working if all substrates are available. Besides L-arginine, the NO synthase needs oxygen to build nitric oxide. In other words, if your oxygen supply is low, you can eat all the L-arginine you want, you won't have more nitric oxide. Another thing about hypoxia is that it increases the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. I recently uploaded a mini-series on erectile physiology, so make sure to check that out to get more background information. If you have watched it, you know that we want parasympathetic activity for erections. Sympathetic tone is bad. A typical place that is ideal to study low oxygen is at high altitude because in the mountains, there is less oxygen. Above 7,000 feet, that's 2,134 meters, the red blood cells become less saturated with oxygen. I read a couple of studies on that topic and they all come up with the same result. Young and relatively young men with normal erections at sea level very often get erectile problems at high altitude. So here's a study from the Pakistani army. They looked at 122 men aged 25 to 40 who had been living at 15,000 feet for more than three months but less than a year. Quite remarkably, roughly 79% of the participants showed some level of erectile dysfunction with high altitude being a statistically significant variable. Another very small study looked at the effect of high altitude in three mountain climbers. Their average age was 32.5 years and they stayed at 2,000 to 5,000 meters above sea level for 26 days. That's 6,500 to 16,400 feet. What I like about this study is the assessment because in the first study I presented, erectile function was assessed by a questionnaire whereas in this study they performed ridges scan tests. That's a machine basically with two elastic bands which are placed on the penis overnight. There are sensors within those elastic bands which record any erectile activity during sleep. Moreover, control measurements were obtained at sea level before their trip to ensure that they were perfectly healthy in terms of erectile function. So here is what they found. After 26 days at high altitude, also depending on the actual altitude, there was a markedly and statistically significant decrease in penile rigidity of the nocturnal erections. One can say above 4,000 meters, that's 13,000 feet, it gets pretty bad. What happens after you return to sea level? There are some studies which looked into that and found that the increased sympathetic tone is still maintained for some days. So why is this important even if you never travel to mountainous areas? because you can simulate Everest in the safety of your own home. There are some health conditions which create hypoxia with the same effects on your body and consecutively on your erections. 
I am talking about obstructive sleep apnea, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. Smoking instantly transports you to the Himalayas. So if you want to use L-arginine, fine, but increase oxygen at the same time. Here's how. Avoid obesity, get your physical activity on a regular basis, and never smoke. Obesity and a sedentary lifestyle are the source of all evil. So I am fine here. There's the North Sea, summer, sun, and sports medicine. Couldn't be better. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>